coming up on Shaw TV, a history lesson in Aboriginal culture, in sports, hyped up playoffs, and on buzz, the sweet sounds of music. Local, 24-7, news, events, connected, current, information, personalities, entertainment, sports, interviews, weather, only on Shaw TV. Just waiting, hanging out and waiting. All these students are so excited to show off to potential employers all of the hard work they've been doing for the last two years here at Nate in the digital media and IT program. Behind me, all of their projects line the wall. That's actually just a small portion of the projects that they're going to be showing off to potential employers on today's show. And we're going to be speaking with them, hearing their passion for everything they've been working so hard on. But before we get to the students, have you signed your organ donor card? Personally, I think it's so important to do so. And in this first story, we're meeting a brave man who's received not one, but two new lungs. Here's Tammy Krachik with more on that. Randy Oliver knew something was wrong when his walk to work left him breathless. It got progressively worse, and I progressively ignored it. On March 3rd, Oliver received a double lung transplant. Before the transplant, you're thinking about winding things down, whether it's uh, family, finances, whatever. Mentally, after a transplant, uh, things open up and bloom and you can plan progressive you know, for the future. Organ transplantation helps anybody who has end-stage organ disease. So, for example, anybody with kidney failure, liver failure, uh, lung failure, any organ that doesn't work due to a wide variety of diseases. Canada-wide, Alberta had the lowest number of deceased organ donations in 2010. I think part of this is a lack of investment in organ donation and transplantation. What we need to do is put dollars into organ donor awareness, both through public awareness as well as education of healthcare providers. Oliver lived on oxygen years before his transplant. This contributed to a fear following his surgery. I had a fear. If I didn't have the... the plastic in my nose, I was going to die uh, because I'd been spent so many years with, uh, on oxygen and my oxygen level would be 98% of normal or 97% of normal and I'd be sitting there worried like mad, where's my next breath going to come from? Now able to successfully breathe on his own, Oliver works through daily rehabilitation. Uh, the whole rehabilitation program generally is three months after the transplant operation, but then you're in constant contact after that. In order to save more lives, Dr. Kumar is trying to obtain funding for a program to repair organs in the operating room prior to transplant. And what this does is allows us to use organs that would otherwise not have been usable. Oliver was one of the lucky ones. All I can say is, you know, I get to see and play with my grandkids now, things along that line. Uh, I don't think I've got an adjective that I could use in that instance. Tammy Karachik, Shaw TV, Capital Region. Thanks very much for that, Tammy. We're now joined by our first and only group for the day. This is Jenny and Cassandra. They're web design students. And ladies, with the organ donation story that we just saw, do you think it's important to sign your organ donor card? Very important. Yeah, Jenny, why do you think so? It's to help anybody out there in need when they need them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Cassandra? Yeah, same opinion here. Very important to be helpful to others. All right. Well, thanks, ladies. Now let's get to your project. So we have Rescue for Life on the board. Cassandra, tell us a little bit about what Rescue for Life is. Well, Rescue for Life is a nonprofit organization, and they rescue animals, they rehome animals, and they rehabilitate them. So we built them their new website. Okay, and that's an organization here in Edmonton? Yes, in Spruce Grove, actually. And how did you choose this one, Jenny? Well, we both have uh, dogs of our own, uh -huh. and mine was actually specifically from a res rescue group. Uh -huh. So I feel that I need to contribute to this, so that's why we chose Rescue we for Life. Did, did Rescue for Life have a, a web page before? Yes, they did, but it was very hard for them to manage, so we made something that's more user functional so how did you make it more user functional um, easier for them to uh, navigate or easier for actually the uh, the client our rescue for life themselves to update so that mm -hmm. they don't have to go in the code yeah yeah no so. HTML no no was they, that what they were using before yes okay <laughs> and for people at home who don't know what HTML is and what you guys do now can you explain quickly Cassandra well HTML is the coding language we use to design web pages and 
for the client previously, she had to hand type all the code herself. So yeah. it was very difficult to update many, many animals up for adoption. And how do you do it now? How did you make it so user friendly and make it easy for your clients? Well, we actually built the website with something called WordPress. Okay. And WordPress is a content management system and allows them to just easily input the animal information and they don't have to look at any code at all. Huh. So when you're you're working with a client for the first time, is making it user friendly when it comes to web pages your number one priority? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That way people don't get lost. So we do all the hard work. They can sit back and relax. When you're leaving school, since the, the year is wrapping up, what do you hope to get involved with um, when it comes to making web pages? Do you want to work with one specific organization or do a lot of freelance? Well, I would like to land a job anywhere. <laughs> but the eye roll when you yeah, say anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Potential employer, she's talking to you. Right here. <laughs> um, but at the moment, I'll just freelance. Yeah. Yeah, so just get the hang of things first and then probably have a stable job. And Cassandra, for our viewers at home that don't know a lot about this industry, is it difficult to find work in web design? Uh, not extremely difficult because for freelancing, it's a lot of small businesses that you can do web design for. Yeah. So it's not extremely difficult, but still, we're looking for jobs here. Yeah. So you know. Definitely. And when you're talking, when the potential employers come by today to check out your board, how are you really going to pitch them so they, so that you stand out out of all the other web design students? Um, we don't just do design and coding separately. We do them together, like they merge as a happy family, and then so that way we are. We're not just stuck in one thing. We, we just make the whole package. And being a team group, the two of you together, did you find it a, a better working experience to have Jenny out by your side and be able to bounce ideas off her? Oh, absolutely. By yourself, you're left to just always question yourself and wonder. But when you have a partner to bounce ideas off of, mm -hmm. you can only get confirmation or feedback. It's terrific that way. Good, good. And Jenny, out of the entire course, the two years, what's been your absolute favorite part? Just. Meeting people, learning yeah. new things. Like a uh, lot of people uh, of my interests in common is here too, so yeah. it's very nice. Well, ladies, thank you so much for speaking with us. Incredible job. We'll be right back after this.